I'll tell you what, we're three episodes into the season, but things are still looking pretty decent for us. I, I genuinely think we could actually end up mid-table-ish this season. I did sort of think we we're going to be like relegation candidates, but we're doing well. We beat Atletico Madrid. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to The Real Deal. Today, we have got two games for you. Uh, Real Betis and Athletic Bilbao are coming up in today's episode. I'm really looking forward to it. I think they're both games that we could be winning, especially when we look at some of our recent results. I think they could be games that we sh may both win. Since you've been last here, things have been pretty decent, actually, I've got to say. Uh, I say decent, it's been a bit of a mix of things. Um, so, last time you were here, we beat Corunia 3-0 and lost 2-1 to Malaga. After that, we played Real Zaragoza in the first division, won 2-0 there. Can tell what your name is on the wing, scoring both of those goals there pretty nicely. Spanish Cup fourth round, first leg against Abar at home. Can tell what your name is and Anthony Lozano scored with two goals there to make sure we won that game 2-1 to give us an advantage going into the second leg. And then we played Atletico Madrid, which is what I was so excited about. We won 2-1, Griezmann scored for them to make them go 1-0 up. But Lozano came and scored one in the 71st minute and then one in the 91st minute to make sure we picked up a 2-1 win there. Then Things have been a little bit iffy since then, I've got to say. But they haven't been bad performances. They've just been unlucky results, I've got to say. Uh, we look at this one against Villarreal. Uh, a 2-1 loss there. Villarreal were second in the table at the time we played them. So they were they were a better side, I've got to say. Uh, and Berke Urza did basically just drop one in the back of his net, which is why they scored. So, essentially, it should have been one all, I think. But you win some, you lose some. Uh, draw some, I suppose, as well. But this one was one we lost. Next up, a 3-2 loss to Barcelona. And while it looks kind of close on the scoreline, we scored right at the start and right at the end. Uh, literally, they were by our only two chances of the game. Barcelona had loads of chances. Could have scored a few more, I think. Uh, but as you can see, they scored all, all three of theirs within 10 minutes of each other. In fact, within six minutes of each other. So a big flurry for them. We just switched off for those 10 minutes, I suppose. And uh, we, we switched on right at the end and right at the right at the beginning of the game. Score, as I say, scoreline was close, but stats nowhere near that. So we, we probably should have lost that game, really, on reflection. We then played Abar in the league and lost 1-0, which was a bit unfortunate. Uh, they scored late on. It was, it was one of those games where one goal was going to win it and... Fortunately for Abar, they got the goals. So, unlucky for us there. Uh, another day we would have won that, I suppose. But Cordoba got an injury in that, which was a bit worrying. And then in the game we just played, uh, we played against Abar once again in the Spanish Cup fourth round, second leg. This time, though, we did manage to get a draw, actually, sorry. But we won the first leg 2 1, so it meant we won overall 3 2. So, we go into the fifth round against Valencia. So, as you can see, no wins in the last four, which means we have dropped down the table a little bit, but only to 14th, which if you told me 14 games into the season or 13 games into the season will be 14th, I'd have taken that. In fact, if we win today, we may actually go up to 11th as all other teams have played. So we could jump up the table a little bit as well. Betis are level on points with us actually just below us in the table. So they're a decent side that probably we could be beating. Hopefully the boys will have it in them to turn themselves around and get some better form. So this is the lineup that I'm going to go for for this game. Burke is going to be starting in goal. Uh, Varela, George, Pinto and Johansson start at the back. Uh, Dorsch, Santa and Borja Fernandez in the midfield trio. Uh, Pastrana on the left and De Thomas on the right because Cordoba, as I mentioned, already injured and so did Can Tell Your Name. Uh, Can Tell Your Name out for another week. Cordoba out for another two weeks. So we probably won't see them this episode. So that instead, uh, Pastrana and De Thomas out on the wings with Lozano starting up front. Our top goal scorer with eight goals so far this season. He's doing pretty well for himself. Right, kickoff is upon us then. Oviedo versus Real Betis. A decent game. This, and I'm expecting... I'm expecting a decent game as well, I've got to say. I'm expecting end-to-end -end stuff. I think we're pretty evenly matched. Uh, they've got a few decent players there. Christian Teo he used to be a pretty decent player, didn't he, at some points. Still does look kind of decent, to be fair. Uh, maybe we can try and get him in the in the side at some point when he leaves them or something like that. I've still not really settled on a proper starting lineup. I don't think. Sort of the wing-back positions, they're sort of the most comfortable, Johannes and Varela, on the grounds that there's no one really as good as them. Uh, we brought Hackman in. He's played a little bit recently because he got a bit hacked off and not playing. Other than that, we do seem to switch things up a little bit. Burke is obviously in goal quite a bit. Obviously, Lozano is the one that's always starting up front. We do one-striker systems and things like that. However... Everywhere else, it, we sort of rotate a little bit a little bit more than I'm used to. I don't know if that's going to hinder the squad at all in terms of no one can really get properly settled down into things. Uh, usually I leave the squad as it is after about 10 games or so 
uh, and that's sort of is the team for the rest of the season. But I don't know, maybe it will change here. Uh, maybe we'll just stick with the team at some point. But Betis coming forward, collected by Burke there from the cross. It was straight at him, to be fair. And can we build from this goal kick? I don't know what to call it. Burke kicked up the field anyway, and we do end up losing position. So Gamma now coming forward in towards his striker, who puts the ball across to Leon. And Sergio Leon has managed to open the scoreline for Betis. And they're away from home as well. I was hoping we'd win this game and sort of take it to them a little bit more, especially as we're at home and it's pretty even. But as it stands right now, Betis 1-0 up. Although Sunset trying to change that. Borja Fernandez, Lozano. Lozano in towards Raul Thomas, who puts it in the back of a net. Immediate reply. Back on level terms. And at least we weren't behind for too long. Following for Betis now. Although it does say real Hispalis that they are. I know this is real Betis. I think it's just because... Sports Interactive and Football Manager don't have a license technically for the Spanish League so they have to just change the name slightly on some of these teams they do retain possession though do better and they're trying to come forward now down this right inside the pitch for them Gamma who already caused a little bit of trouble earlier on cuts inside plays it to Guado or Guardado and uh, Christian Taylor danger man we've already identified coming forward on the ball into their striker once again and again they are looking dangerous have they got our old striker at right back we had a striker called oh we had it it was called Linares not Linares um, it's very, very similar because I thought he retired and I was very confused as to why he was at right back for them. But no, it's like it's a different player. Um, at least I hope it is still. He's not just changed his name. Uh, that, that's Pazella at centre back. I feel like we had a Pazella at uh, Crystal Palace in the journeyman say within FM17. I would have to check on that in a sec. Uh, but if that's the same Pazella, he's playing way below his level here at uh, Real Betis. Although Real Betis probably should be higher at the table than they actually are right now. I think it is the same one, you know. I, I, I genuinely think it is the same one. Yeah, German Pazella, uh, he's a bit old in this now. We had him at uh, Crystal Palace, obviously has never played for Crystal Palace in real life. But, you know, he looks a decent player. He was a decent player for me in uh, FM17. So it's good to see him getting on still well at uh, Betis. Hopefully he didn't score now. I've mentioned his name and checked him out. So a bit of a busy first half there, I think. It's been a little bit cagey, but a lot of chances created for both sides. Just nothing major particularly assertively not having a performance out there they look fired up by that so I thought it was a bit risky saying that but they seem to have reacted well so fingers crossed now we do get into this game and really take it to them in the second half because we should be doing that at home I mean it's still pretty cagey actually uh, even more cagey actually barely any shots in the second half uh, we're 70 minutes into it now nothing is particularly happening in this game I think we have to change things up a little bit Raul Thomas apparently played really really well um, and I would bring him up to a striker, but we've got no one who can play on the right wing, really. So, Fibas is going to come on as an advanced playmaker on support. And then we're going to bring Ruiz on for Borja Fernandez as well as a box-to-box. -box. There are two changes I think we'll make for now. I, th I feel like they, they, those two changes in midfield could make a big difference, actually. I think the issue with midfield is right now, everyone is three and a half star credit ability. Like, all five players that we've got in midfield, including Dorsch. They're all like three and a half star current ability and a lot of them do have five star potential as well or at least like four and a half star potential. So finding which one is the best to start is a little bit tricky. However, I don't think they've made a huge impact right now. So for these final five, it's five minutes now, we're going to go to attacking fluid. See if that just makes... I should have gone a little bit earlier actually thinking about it. I should have just looked at the clock and thought, let's go attacking a bit earlier. That's my fault. If it makes a difference, that's fantastic, but I can't really see anything happening. This second half has been highlightless. Nothing has happened in it whatsoever. If we can snatch a late winner, I'll be delighted with it. But as the clock ticks down, it's, it's just not looking likely, is it? As the clock really ticks down now, 10 seconds left in the game, nothing is going to happen. We'll take the draw, I suppose. Uh, Betis are a decent side that are should be a lot higher at the table. They've probably had a poor start to the season, probably now starting to recover a little bit. Uh, but it does mean no win in five games for us. Um, I'm going to say unlucky wasn't quite our night out there. We're still 14th. We're still four points clear of the relegation zone. So it's still pretty good at the moment. However, I really think we that should have been the game we should have won. Hopefully then we can come up against Athletic Bilbao in a couple of days time and really take it to them. Uh, we may switch formation just to see if that works a little bit better. Bilbao, a better side than us sitting ninth in the table right now. But at the same time, maybe this is the formation that we're using against Betis was the right one or maybe we even go full attacking formation with the diamond i've not really made it very clear to you you'll just find out basically what i decided to use but right now um i could use any of them i mean a couple of players now sort of looking a bit fresher a quarter was not going to play but can tell what your name is may play in this next game he's looking kind of fit now i've not been overly convinced by this formation recently so i think 
I, I, I don't. I think this is a little bit too risky to play against Athletic Bilbao. So we're going to go five at the back instead, which is, I suppose, it's a little bit risky. Uh, what we're going to do then is Dorsch cannot play centre back, so uh, Jordan Williams will not come on for him. Uh, we'll put Williams on the bench anyway. We want to keep Dorsch on. Dorsch can temporarily go into midfield, but I want to bring uh, Katic onto the bench, but then actually onto the pitch instead of Williams. So that's the back line. Varela and Johansson are fine at wing back, but I think in January, if we're going to use this formation and use it more and more, we do need to bring in two players who actually are decent wing backs. And I've got a little short list. It just depends if we have the money or or they actually want to join us. That's probably the main issue the players have already got scouted out. In that midfield then, it's it's going to change. Uh, Borja Fernandez is going to become that... No, he's not, actually. We're going to leave him as a Mazala. Gene Ruiz is going to come in to be that ball-winning midfielder. And Fibas is going to come in to be attacking playmaker on attack. Uh, Lozano can be complete forward on support, whereas Thomas can stay as a track Batista on attack. And I think that is going to be that. I think this is what we're going to play for the Bilbao game. Right, kickoff is upon us then. Bilbao in the red. We're in our classic blue kit they've actually got a fairly attacking formation you can sort of see it there they're playing a 4-3-1-2 formation quite narrow uh, so perhaps our wing backs can make use of that but I, I still think this is the best option for us so first highlight of the game then is coming towards us as a bill man as a, as a what as a bill bow man as a bit of a tongue twister actually uh, oh my goodness he missed the ball completely Feebas managed to get through on it and went through on goal had his first shot saved by Kepa the goalkeeper and then his rebound hit the post and was, was cleared away or went off wherever it was. So a decent little start for us there. Other than that little highlight, it's been a very, very quiet match. Few shots, no highlights. What is going on? I want to see a bit more action in this game. Like if you watch the England stuff that I did over the weekend, like there was loads of highlights in that. Literally, Spanish football, there doesn't really seem to be much action. It's all playing the midfield by looks of things. As I say that though, there is a highlight for us now as Ruiz puts the ball over to Varela. Kind of risky, but Varela does win it. And Lozano now with a chance to uh, try and extend the play a little bit. We've seen to pass it around the midfield. This is what it probably is most of the time, just passing around the midfield as Lozano gets it off to Ruiz. Borja Fernandez oh, could have got it out wide to Johansson, but couldn't quite turn around enough, I don't think. Uh, Fibas now on the ball. Varela gets a sort of crossing out to Borja Fernandez. Into Raul Thomas, who puts it over. That was the best chance of the game so far, I think, for us. And yet, we still haven't taken the lead. It's okay, Tom. Keep calm. We're still doing pretty well in the league. It's our 15th game of the season. Uh, we're well above the relegation zone as it stands. I mean, we're, after being like the last game to kick off uh, last week or last game week, we're now the first one to kick off this week. So it's, it's a little bit weird. But we're still doing pretty well for ourselves. We could move up to 11th today still as things stand, which is pretty decent. Feebas now on the ball into Lozano. Lozano, what a save by the goalkeeper there. Lozano should have buried that. But it was saved at the last second. That's our third clear-cut chance there as well which is a worry how are we not burying these clear-cut chances are we gonna rue this mistake really if we don't bury those chances right then the first half was was good i've got to say uh stat wise it was good three clear-cut chances we probably should have scored i'm gonna go happy with the points out there keep it up everyone seems pretty happy with that if we can just carry this momentum through for the rest of the game I'll be happy with us. I mean, if you look at the stats right now, 10 shots to 4 shots, we are dominating possession. We should be doing better. Uh, I say possession, we're dominating the entire thing. Uh, possession as well, 56%, but dominating everything stat-wise. We should be doing better than this. We should be getting a little bit... I'm, ju I'm just a bit annoyed that we're not doing better. Feebas not playing well on a 6.3. We're going to bring Sunset on for him instead. He likes to be a deep-line playmaker, though. We'll put him deep-line on support. Uh, we may even bring someone into the attacking midfield later on as well. Chance now for uh, potentially Bill Bowell or the corner, the goal kick rather, uh, went straight to us. And now Borja Fernandez can bring it forward down the right hand side of our attack. Johansson tries to put a cross in, but collected by Susetta instead. His pass was rubbish though, which is lucky for us because that could have been an easy break for um, Athletic Bill Bowell. Ruiz on the ball out towards Lozano now, who can put a cross in. Raul Thomas waiting at the back post. Another save by this goalkeeper who is absolutely instant. I know he's a bit of a wonder kid actually in the game, uh, Kepa. Uh, he's obviously very, very good. And clearly Bilbao, uh, he's, he's keeping him in the game. That was a fourth clear-cut chance as well, which is even more frustrating. Ruiz on the ball now. Out to Lozano. His shot was rubbish. Are we going to score on this game? Because Kepa is having an absolute blinder. He's only on a 6.9, bless him. Uh, he should be on much more than that, in my opinion. But 
Who am I to judge, apparently? Not happy with the way Rao de Thomas has been playing either, so Jeremy is going to come on as a poacher uh, for these last 15 minutes or so. We may make one more change and bring an attacking midfielder on in a second. We really should have won this game. We should be having this under wraps. We should have scored a couple goals already. Uh, we are going to bring someone on, actually. Uh, Ruiz is going to come off. And we're going to bring Diara on in that attacking midfield position. He's not played for a long time. Neither is Jeremy, actually. They're both looking very match unfit. Only 60 and 70% respectively match sharpness. Corner now for Bilbao. Cleared, but only as far as their man Alex, who has a shot on that. Was a, if that had gone in the back of a net, I would have been raging. 17 shots we've had in this game. Seven on target. Four clear-cut chances. We're, we're not even on attacking. And we're, we're doing this kind of stuff with this formation. Uh, it's so frustrating because we should have won this game. Bilbao are going to be so happy that they managed to get a draw out of this. We should have won this six games now without a win, but these past two games, we really should have won. It's frustrating. Well, I've said well done. You proved a lot of people wrong out there in de avoiding defeat because I didn't want to keep morale up. I can't really be cross. The way we played was very, very good. We just couldn't score a goal, which was annoying. No, no. It, it was a clean sheet at least. When was the last time we had a clean sheet, actually? Uh, the last time we had a clean sheet was that 2-0 win against Zaragoza, then the 3-0 win against uh, Karunia before that. So, long overdue a clean sheet, but we're also now long overdue a win. Hopefully, we'll get one against Vigo next time, who's sitting 18th. Alaves 20th as well, so hopefully these next two games are going to be wins. Then we have the win to break. Then we've got Real Madrid and Valencia in the Cup and the League. Uh, but that's, I feel like it's a bit too soon to play a game. So, I think next episode will probably end up being Levante and Espanyol, I think. Maybe Espanyol and, and Real San Sebastián. We'll work it out but after these games, though. Uh, and I do want to squeeze in Barcelona and, of course, Real Madrid will be the last episode of this season as well. So we've got these two, we've got at least those two episodes to look forward to. Uh, it's just a case of how many we put in before that Barcelona game. Maybe one, maybe two. As you're watching this, I'm actually away for a little bit of holiday uh, in Portugal. So... Um, this is all pre-recorded, so you can tell me what you like in the comment section. Do this, do that, but <laughs> I, I do apologise, but I will have done it before this. So, um, so either way, uh, it's going to turn out that you're going to get what you're given, essentially, at least until I get back from holiday, and then we can uh, discuss a little bit more between us what's going to be the next episode and things like that. So if you've enjoyed today's episode, make sure you do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I will see you next time for some more Real Deal action.